Oh, he's got to be a great player. <laughs> no, players were teasing me a little while ago. I had just heard about him. So you're not complaining about the Bucks fans? You're I don't think so. I don't think so. Brandon's going to play in probably about a half. What what do you want to see out of him, and what do you think that he can accomplish out there, even though that he hasn't played in such a long time, got a lot of rust to knock off? Well, we've been watching him practice for a number of weeks, and you know he's he's ready to go. He's he's looking forward to playing in the game situation. And it'll be fun to get him out there in the last preseason game. Get used for our calls, just playing the game, getting a chance to tackle and be put in uh, game situations. I'd like to do that before our first game before the Monday night game, and hopefully there's no setbacks, and he keeps he plays the way he's been practicing. As far as keeping eight or nine offensive linemen, in your history, kind of the, the benefits to having one extra guy, even if they're not going to be up, and what goes into that decision? Well, first of all, there's always, there's always numbers. There's offensive linemen. You talk about eight, nine, or ten receivers, five, six, or seven. Backs, you know, four, five, or six. You know, defensive linemen, sometimes seven or eight. I mean, every position has that number. What we're trying to do is put the top 53 players together. And every year it changes. And your practice squad changes. And so you've got to put, a, a, put in a plan that you think that gives you the best chance to be successful. And that's why you go into the fourth preseason game evaluating a lot of these players, not only for backup positions but on special teams as well. Why do you expect the quarterback similar to the last one? Pardon me? The quarterback rotation for this game, do you expect it to be similar to the, the third game? Uh, Pat White will play the entire game unless, you know, he goes down. If he goes down, Rex will go in. And if he goes down, I'm going in. I'm the only guy left. <laughs> Joe, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> God darn, that will be headlines tomorrow. Uh, right now, I'm not sure what direction we could go. D.Y., we practice him over there. And you got guys like Josh and Jordan who have been quarterbacks before. A lot of our players, Santana's been a quarterback at one time. But right now with four in the roster, that hasn't been one of my top concerns. Mike, did you believe, did you feel at all that Brandon Merriweather, maybe you guys brought him back too early because he had that setback there with the knee, the, the rust, Merriweather? Oh, you know, you don't, you never know, you know. That's why I don't get into those situations. Doctors approve him. They say if he's ready to go or not. That's why we don't make those decisions. Mike, when you going back to the offensive line, eight or nine and, and all that, would you be comfortable with just three young guys as backups, or do you feel like, hey, I would want to have a veteran backup at one of those spots? Well, a lot goes into it, but it goes back to the same thing I said before. What do you think gives you the best chance to win when you're going to put your top 53 guys together? So it could be eight, you know, it could be nine, could be ten. But, uh, uh, you know, you never know until you go through the last preseason game. Uh, Thursday night, um, how's the pregame meeting with Dr. Andrews going to work? Is that going to be similar to, I guess, the one you did in Washington? How, what are the logistics on that? We haven't. Uh, I don't know yet. I know Dr. Uh, Andrews will sit down and evaluate Robert and probably just give us his recommendation. I'm sure very similar to what he did last game. I look at him. Um, Thursday Sometime Thursday. I don't know when it's going to be. I haven't talked to him yet. Either before or after the game, but I'm sure it'll be sometime Thursday because he'll be at the game. and Hopefully he doesn't leave town without checking him out. Mike, have you gotten down to 75 players? And if so, who are the final um, few cuts that need to be made? Yeah, we have gotten down to the final 75. What name don't you have? Um, I mean, we only had the ones you guys sent out yesterday. Okay. True Blood. Uh, yeah, he's part of the 75. Um, he is. He's not with us. Uh, Ryan Mouton. Mouton. We just, I just talked to him a while ago. Uh, he's not on the list yet. Who else? Is that 75? Yes, he's part of the 75. He's part of the 75. He's released. Yeah, he's released. Yeah. That's what... Yeah. <laughs> you guys keep asking questions off the man. Hey, hey, you don't have to get upset. We we got anger anger issues. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Ah, yeah.
Somebody's got to go. I mean, somebody's got to go. Are Hurt and character, character do they count against the 75? Uh, yes, they do. They do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, did you say Hurt, too, in character? No, Hurt, hurt counts. He's, he's part of the 75. Character is released. He does not count. He's still, I shouldn't say he's not released, but he's not part of the 75. Yeah. No, he's not an IR, but he's, you, don't, you don't have to count him. I, I assume Thursday night will also sort of be an, uh, an audition for punt returner. Uh, who, are you gonna, who are we going to see back there? Well, hopefully we make a punt so we got somebody, somebody back there. But, you know, we're talking about it right now. I don't want to say it this time because we've got a couple different directions we could go. But just because somebody's um, – it's not an audition. We've got some people that have been back there. They've been practicing every day here for the last month. We don't have to put somebody back there and still start them on Monday night. But we'll put in a couple of guys that don't have a lot of playing time back there. You know, guys like uh, Chris. Might even put in a guy like Josh Morgan back there. Guys that have caught punts before. Uh, natural running ability. But um, a couple of young names. How similar do you view Evan Royster and Keelan Williams at what they do? And can you give me some like different differences or differentiating attributes between them? Well, I don't want to get into different attributes, but they're two very talented guys. Uh, you know, Evan, great cutting ability, uh, very smart player, uh, catches the ball extremely well. I think very similar with Ryan, just a little bit different style runner. Uh, Ryan's probably a little bit faster. Uh, both contribute on special teams. Both good football players. Mike, Mike um, Robert said on the radio this morning that he felt something kind of clicked for him during the warm-ups against, before the Buffalo game, that he just felt, maybe just, like I said, felt his body clicked. Did you see any sort of even subtle differences in him warming up and then and since then? Well, I didn't watch him warm up, so I can't talk about that, but he had a good practice uh, yesterday. They had a good practice today. Yeah, I can see a, a big uh, – Improvement from the start when he came out here the first day, when he was improved to where he's now. And you can see he's in football shape, and uh, there hasn't been a setback, so everything's been very positive. What constitutes a good practice for him at this point in your mind? I just feel more relaxed. He can put in more team situations. You can tell when somebody's had enough reps where it starts to be automatic. You don't have to push it. You know, you're, you're hoping. You're hoping he's 100%. Like I said, the reason why I'm a little uh, iffy on that is I want to judge him every day. But I have not seen a setback. He looks good. Like I said, I, I've seen improvement from much improvement from the first day to where he's at now. Uh, when he first came out, just in his ability to move, his ability to scramble, um, just the ease in which he practices. Jarvis and Rob serve their suspensions. What do you want to see from them in Tampa? And is there a lasting message that you're going to leave with them since obviously you won't have any contact with them? Well, I've already talked to them about the message. I think that the message is very obvious. Uh, after, uh, after Saturday evening, we cannot uh, talk to them until you know, they come back. So we want them to stay in great shape. And you know, when they do come back, hopefully we'll help our football team win. And the only way they're going to do that is if they, you know, do the little things over the next uh, four weeks. Okay, thanks.